Despite coming off three years layoff, it took John Jones less than three minutes to claim the UFC heavyweight crown. In the co-main event of the evening, Alexa Grasso shocked the world when she submitted Valentina Shevchenko. Well, after watching a UFC event, there's only one question that comes in my mind, and that is who should these fighters face next? So before wasting further time, let's start the video. A dream fight between the most successful UFC light heavyweight and heavyweight champions in history appears to be in works. UFC President Dana White confirmed at the UFC 285 post-fight press conference on Saturday that John Jones vs Stipe Miocic was next. White did not set a date or location, but Miocic has repeatedly claimed the fight will headline UFC 290 at International Fight Week on July 8. This is certainly a reasonable time to book the fight. John Jones did deserve to be UFC heavyweight champion and Miocic is the best situated for the title shot. Gan crumbled in the worst way possible against Jones and must work hard to repair his damage. Fortunately, Gan did not absorb any damage in the fight and can make a quick turnaround. Ranked number 1 in the UFC's heavyweight ranking, at least until Monday, a fight against number 6 ranked Tom Espinal makes sense. Espinal looked to be the next big thing before suffering a horrible knee injury 15 seconds into a fight with Curtis Blades. Espinal resumed sparring in January and might be on the verge of a comeback. If Gan can remain patient, fighting the loser of April's Pavlovich vs Blades bout also makes sense. If there was ever a champion that deserves an immediate rematch, it's Valentina Shevchenko. She is the record holder for most UFC women's title defenses and lost because of a tactical error. Grasso certainly proved to be a worthy adversary and is rightful champion, but the performance was not so dominant that you can dismiss Shevchenko's chances in a rematch. Grasso can cement her place as the future and Shevchenko can turn back the clock. It's the right fight to make in my opinion. It took Rachmanov until the final minute of the final round, but he scored his 17 career finish. Rachmanov made good on lofty expectations as a credible world title threat 5 fights into his UFC run. He is a violent force that can stop you with strikes or submissions. He outstruck Neil, one of the most powerful and technically sound strikers at welterweight. Before choking him out, Dana White said that Covington has been itching to fight, Hamza Chimaev's future at welterweight appears murky and Rahmanov is poised to take his place as the new welterweight destroyer. A win for either fighter would significantly boost their stock and give them leverage for a title shot. Nickel's UFC debut was short and dominant as expected. The UFC will be hard pressed to find someone that can test Nickel on his way up the middleweight rankings, but it has to try. It's too early to match him against the best middleweights in the world, but a striker the caliber of Phil Hawes would be a step up. Hawes is 2 wins, 2 losses in his last 4 and is coming off a KO loss to Roman Dolize. Hawes proved he could be nasty in the clinch in his TKO win over Deron win last June and has been only submitted once in his 9 year career. Dracus Duplessis is now entered in the elite section of middleweights. While his opponent is the obvious choice, Cannonier does not have anything booked. He is less than one year removed from unsuccessful title bid. But he is coming off a win over Shane Strickland. It would be Cannonier's fighting down in rank. But that's justified. Given the recent time of his title shot, this would be a big fight for both and the correct one for the division. Well, these were my just personal opinions about the fights that should happen after UFC 285. If you like the video, make sure to hit the subscribe button and stick with the channel for more fighting related updates.